The individual states within the United States each have their own local government, armed forces, resources, and land, with many other things like any other nation would. However, much like any other nation, disputes between them can and have led into war or conflict. Nowadays, most state rivalries are based around sports and that such, but one such rivalry started centuries ago, Ohio versus Michigan. That started all the way back in the 1800s, and eventually blew over into an event known as the Toledo War. The Toledo War happened in 1835 between Ohio, a state, and Michigan, a territory at the time, over a strip of land that included the town of Toledo, a major port city along the Great Lakes. Prior to the rise of the railroad industry, rivers and canals were the major highways of commerce in the American Midwest. Toledo fell within the Great Black Swamp, and this area was nearly impossible to navigate by road especially after spring and summer rains. At the time, there were plans to connect the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes through a series of canals connecting through Toledo, but it never panned out. Federal surveyors never really concluded who owned the strip, as the boundaries for the land was stated at the southern end of Lake Michigan, which, at the time, was several miles south of its actual location. This left a dispute between Ohio and the territory of Michigan over the few miles of land. When Michigan gained enough population to seek statehood, it was rejected due to the Toledo dispute. With Ohio actively working against having Michigan become a state, it set up its own county government within the Strip, which only further exacerbated the problem. The governor in Michigan at the time, Stevens T. Mason, largely ignored the protests from D.C. and set in motion a series of changes that would be of becoming a state, such as its constitution, supreme court, and a state legislator. He also passed the Pains and Penalty Act, which the act made it a criminal offense for Ohioans to carry out any governmental action like voting in the strip, with a fine of up to $1,000 and up to five years of imprisonment. He also raised the state militia and sent them into Toledo. Under the command of Brigadier General Joseph W. Brown, he effectively started the so-called war. Brown occupied the town with around a thousand men, while the governor of Ohio, Robert Lucas, raised 600 of the state militia and sent them 10 miles to the south of Toledo. President Andrew Jackson sided with Ohio at the time, largely due to the political power that the state had in presidential elections. His attorney general stated that Michigan owned the land unless Congress stated otherwise. And in response, Jackson sent two representatives from D.C. to the disputed land. The ultimate conclusion from this was that Congress would later settle the matter, and the residents within the disputed region would decide who they wanted to belong to. Lucas reluctantly agreed to the proposal and began to disband the militia. Three days later, elections in the region were held under Ohio law. Mason refused the deal, and various arrests were made under the Pains and Penalty Act of people that voted in the Ohio election. Actions after this didn't occur for some time, but on April the 16th of 1836, surveyors from Ohio were shot up by Brown's militia, which massively exacerbated the tensions between the two. And both states did their best to one-up each other, with various skirmishes, arrests, and legal battles lasting a good portion of the year. On June the 15th, Jackson signed a bill that allowed Michigan to become a state, but only after it ceded the Toledo Strip. In exchange for this concession, Michigan would be granted the Upper Peninsula, but because of the perceived worthlessness of the remote wilderness, a special state convention rejected the offer in September. As the year wore on, Michigan found itself deep in a financial crisis and was nearly bankrupt because of the high militia expenses. The government was spurred to action by the realization that a $400,000 surplus in the United States Treasury was about to be distributed to the 25 states, but not to territorial governments. Michigan would have been ineligible to receive a share of the money. With that in mind, 
Michigan reluctantly accepted the original offer, giving up around a thousand miles with Toledo and its rich agricultural land, in return for over 9,000 miles of rich forestry and ore mining land just not yet known to anyone. I hope